Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Even if you're a novice at chess, you probably know that it's not the easiest game to master. There's a reason that gaining the title of Grandmaster is such a widely respected honor. The title proves that the person has mastered such techniques as analytical and strategic thinking, abstract reasoning, concentration, patience, grit, determination, memory, creativity, and self-awareness. All of these attributes play a large role in mastering the game of chess. And so it's no wonder that July 20th has been designated as World Chess Day by the United Nations. As they see it, the game of chess not only promotes fairness, inclusion, and mutual respect but it's also one of the oldest intellectual and cultural games we know, blending elements of sport, scientific thought, and artistry. Top athletes across the world of sports frequently attribute a mental advantage to their involvement in chess. All of this adds up to a clear message, we can learn a lot from this centuries-old board game. And in the four sections that follow, we'll do just that. Chapter 1, A Life of Continuous Improvement With over 605 million enthusiasts worldwide, chess isn't just a game, it's also a profound teacher of life's most essential skills. One of the first lessons it can teach us is the importance of embracing a childlike curiosity. Age and experience can provide wisdom, but only if you let them. One of the pitfalls of gaining experience is that the things that once inspired and delighted us can begin to lose their luster over time. As we spend years becoming masters of our craft, we can start to feel like it all becomes more of the same. That's why, even as your mastery grows, it's vital to long-term success that you maintain a level of wonder and fascination for what you do. The most elite performers are well aware of the power of nurturing a childlike wonder. To remain on top, we have to keep that spark alive. Mikhail Tal was the eighth world chess champion. He found inspiration by going back to the beginning and taking beginner's chess classes. Tiger Woods also understood the power of adopting a beginner's mindset to unlock new possibilities. When he was at the very top of his game, he went back to basics, deconstructing his swing and building it back up from the ground up. This is something that has been understood for quite some time. There's even a Zen parable about a master and his student. When pouring the student tea, the master lets the cup overflow until it is spilling onto the ground. The point being, you can't grow if your mind is full of preconceptions and you think you know it all. And make no mistake, learning is a lifelong process. Before we go any further, let's debunk an unhelpful myth. Many are under the mistaken belief that the great chess players can see dozens of steps ahead. But nothing could be further from the truth. Chess is far too complex. There are too many possible moves. In fact, there are more potential moves than atoms in the observable universe. So it would be utterly futile for a player to try to predict how a game will unfold. Instead, we should be more like Magnus Carlsen, the 2013 world chess champion, who is all about finding ways to adapt. Flexibility is the real hallmark of an elite performer. And there are few games that are better than chess at showing how we can demonstrate flexibility in the face of complexity. Learning in chess, as in life, demands continual adaptation. Chess isn't about memorization or calculation. It's about intuition and understanding and embracing the complexity. In that way, a great chess player is like an improvisational jazz musician. They understand their craft in such a well-rounded way that they can instinctively pivot in any direction at a moment's notice. This is what makes Carlson such a great champion. As another player puts it, whatever situation you drop him in, his promptness to react is brilliant. He might come in with a game plan, but if that strategy isn't working, he'll quickly shift into a new plan. Flexibility is a challenging trait to nurture, but it's one of the best strengths we can develop. Chess also points us toward strategies for developing other talents. 
In particular, we have the method of disaggregated learning. This is the strategy of breaking down all aspects of the game into isolated, manageable parts. Sometimes these parts aren't even in the game you're training for. The NBA champion Steph Curry practices disaggregated learning when he spends time during practice dribbling two basketballs at the same time. This exercise increases his coordination and his confidence, even if he'll never be playing a game with two basketballs in his hands. Another chess methodology comes from Wilhelm Steinitz, and it's called the theory of accumulation of small advantages. Steinitz was a chess player in the 19th century, and he believed that the best approach to winning came not by being aggressive, but by being patient and methodical. In short, if you gain a slight advantage with every move, you'll eventually build up an overwhelming, winning position. This theory of accumulation can be used practically by focusing on daily progress. Rather than trying to improve yourself in big leaps and bounds, make a small, manageable 1% improvement each and every day. Chess can teach us a philosophy of growth and discipline, one that helps us foster resilience in a world that is often focused on instant gratification. True wisdom lies in knowing that there is more to learn, no matter if you're an amateur player or a grandmaster. Chapter 2 Learning from Loss Whether you're playing chess, tennis, football, or any other game of skill, one of the greatest lessons you can learn is that of sustaining focus. Concentration and mental composure are the key ingredients to any top performer, no matter what you're doing. Quick and easy victories are rare. The harsh reality of life is that success is earned and sustained through perseverance. This is especially true when things are going well. When your plan seems to be working and everything is running smoothly, this is when you'll naturally lose focus and drop your guard. Champion chess players like Magnus Carlsen know all too well that even a momentary lapse in concentration can shift the tide of a game. In a 2018 tournament, Carlsen was so confident of his impending win that he walked away from the chessboard and gestured to the cameras that his victory was all but confirmed. But when he returned to the board, it only took a few moves from his opponent to completely tip the scales and cause Carlsen to lose the match. To be the best, you have to maintain mental composure throughout every phase. But it's also key to understand that, from time to time, there will be losses along the way. That's why facing defeat head-on is another hallmark of true champions. Rather than wallowing in disappointment, the best performers view losses as opportunities for growth. Basketball legend Kobe Bryant even went so far as to say that losing made him excited. For him, it presented an opportunity, a chance to identify weaknesses and refine his approach. This is exactly the kind of growth mentality that separates good players from great ones. Likewise, our mistakes, far from being shameful, should be celebrated as invaluable learning opportunities. By analyzing errors and recognizing recurring patterns, we can cultivate resilience and improve performance. This approach is of course in direct opposition to the temptation to blame others or refuse to own up to our mistakes. While it might sound strange to form an appreciation for life's imperfections, this isn't such an outlandish idea. The Japanese philosophy of wabi-sabi is precisely that, an outlook on life that embodies an appreciation for imperfection, one that finds beauty in the transient nature of life. Likewise, the Japanese art form of kintsugi transforms broken pottery into works of art that don't try to hide the cracks and broken edges of the past. These approaches are aligned in showing us that when we embrace imperfection it can enrich the human experience and foster resilience. Mistakes and losses aren't the end, they're chances to grow into something even better than before. Chapter 3 Empathy and Risk When looking at the various lessons we can learn from playing chess, here's one that can't be underestimated, understanding your opponent. Though we've debunked the notion that chess players think multiple moves ahead, that doesn't mean they don't do their homework ahead of time. Delving into the minds of others provides valuable insight, allowing you to anticipate their moves and formulate winning strategies. Take Magnus Carlsen, for example, 
who meticulously studies his rivals, leveraging his understanding of their strengths and weaknesses to secure victory. In today's world, where dialogue often devolves into monologues, empathizing with others' viewpoints is a rare skill. Yet it's a skill worth honing, as it fosters deeper connections and promotes mutual understanding. The art of debate should not be about winning, but rather about seeking truth and understanding diverse perspectives. Essentially, studying your opponent is one way of trying to stay ahead of the curve, which is often wiser than mapping out long-term plans. This rings true in various arenas, from business to boxing. As Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. This pretty well sums up the importance of adaptability and agility in the face of adversity. Another concept that pervades both chess and life is sacrifice. While some sacrifices yield immediate returns, others entail unforeseeable outcomes. In other words, a well-played sacrifice can often pay dividends down the road, but in order to reap these benefits you need to be comfortable with a certain amount of risk. In chess, risk is inherent, requiring players to weigh potential gains against uncertain outcomes. While some thrive on bold moves, others prefer a more conservative approach. Yet, as Magnus Carlsen asserts, avoiding risks can be the riskiest strategy of all. Ultimately, embracing uncertainty and being at peace with the consequences are essential traits for navigating life's complexities. Taking chances doesn't guarantee success, but it offers the opportunity for growth and discovery. Chapter 4 The Wisdom of Warriors and Grandmasters The Golden State Warriors, as coached by Steve Kerr, have won four NBA titles over an eight-year span. One of their strategic moves is to come out of the halftime break with full intensity, even if they've already built up a 20-point lead. In other words, the Warriors always have a baked-in plan to fight against complacency. Complacency is a common trap that many people fall into when they feel comfortable or have gained an advantage. In chess, complacency can be deadly, as your opponents are often at their most dangerous when you have them up against the wall. So it's crucial to maintain intense focus and avoid becoming overconfident. The key here is to recognize when and where to remain hyper-focused, whether in competitive endeavors or everyday life. Monitoring overconfidence levels and intentionally shifting goals can also help combat complacency. This balance between intense focus and not being too rigid in your approach is essential for sustained success. Another useful technique that many chess champions utilize is called retrograde analysis. In a nutshell, this is a way of looking at things backward, starting at the end. A popular way of doing this is through visualization, to picture our desired future outcomes and work backward to determine the steps needed to achieve them. This technique has been used by countless athletes and successful individuals like Oprah Winfrey, Jim Carrey, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. The effectiveness of visualization emphasizes the power of mindset in influencing present behavior. By viewing the future as inevitable it can act as a springboard for change. We can then get down to the business of addressing past issues and motivating ourselves to improve our lives in the present. This leads us to our last bit of advice, to go ahead and start being the person you want to become. In 1998, the author lost an important chess tournament. This one stung more than usual because at the time he was close to his goal of achieving the title of Grandmaster and the loss set him back a bit. But after it was over, he received some sage advice from Grandmaster Alexander Shabalov. He said, in order to become a Grandmaster, you must first be a Grandmaster. Shabalov was basically telling him why he'd lost his match. The author was trying too hard to win. He was so focused on getting the title that he lost sight of the tools, techniques, and preparation that were the keys to success. He simply wasn't playing like a grandmaster. The author took this advice to heart, and instead of obsessing over the end goal, he learned to embrace the process and focus on continuous improvement. Through dedication, self-awareness, and perseverance, he ultimately achieved his goal. And when he did, he realized that he'd already been playing like a grandmaster before the title made it official. 
His journey epitomizes the importance of authenticity, self-acceptance, and embracing challenges as opportunities for growth, in chess and in life. Final Summary The world of chess is an intricate one, and it's full of useful insights that can be applied to life in a variety of ways. The many strategies and principles that are at the heart of chess can be seen as metaphors for personal growth and success in life. These valuable lessons include the importance of maintaining focus, resilience, self-awareness, and the long-term values of embracing challenges and being willing to make sacrifices. The author also stresses the importance of maintaining a childlike wonder toward your craft and embracing the complexities and losses that you'll encounter along the way. In many ways, the game of chess parallels the complexities of everyday life, teaching us to approach obstacles with strategic thinking, adaptability, and a growth mindset. From mastering the art of concentration to understanding the power of visualization and learning to navigate setbacks with grace, it gives us timeless principles for achieving excellence, both in the sport and beyond. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.